We, we saw after the last primary, uh, the last, sorry, not primary, the last convention held uh, by the People's Democratic Party, we, we knew at the, at the time there was kind of these two blocks. One was led uh, by the PDP governors, most notably River State Governor Yeson Wike. The other side was led by former military generals and uh, uh, former ruling officials within the party at inception in 1999. Obviously, Governor Wike's block ended up kind of taking control of the leadership of the party. In view of that, are there any concerns that when this primary eventually happens, if a consensus is not reached, that whoever loses or the many that ultimately out of 12 so far, 11 will have to lose, uh, eventually would say, well, look, this is a, a matter of uh, a, a state governor choosing one above the rest of us. Do, is, is that at all a concern? Or do you think that each of them would buy into the idea that indeed they lost a, a, in a democratic, free and fair process that was adjudged by the party membership? That is what is expected unless they don't want to remain politicians. But going back to the matter of the chairmanship, you see, there's also an emerging consensus nobody is noticing. We've had enough of retired generals choosing and giving us presidents. And if you look at the experience from 1999, you can say it's been very exciting. And what you saw with that uh, PDP um, chairmanship thing you mentioned is a progressive demystification of some of the forces that have presumed that Nigeria is a private property that a few people can meet and take decisions and inform the rest of, rest of us. And in fact, that has been, it got, it got carried into the president, into the democratic engagement we have. If you recall, uh, the Tambuwal uh, speakership, it was always the executive that gave, gave Nigeria heads of the National Assembly. An independent arm of government, the Senate presidency, I think, had to be a relay race of about six all chosen by the presidency. So when the House of Reps decided, no, we're going to choose our man, and they did. But is that not in any way contradictory to the, to the earlier notion you expressed about party loyalty and party supremacy? At what, at, what, at, what, at what point does the party, should the party be supreme over the affairs of who occupies what office within the membership of that party? At the level of choosing the right person for it. If a party represents something and you violate it, you're already creating a, a, what, you, what you might call a group disconnect. Now, that group disconnect will give life to different platforms of loyalty. That's what produced Saraki as Senate president, if you recall. Yes, he was a member of the, PD, of the APC, but he created a coalition. So today, the National Assembly is actually the opposition within its own government. That happens, and that can happen when you choose to decide wrongly. And in the case I referred to, the House of Reps stood, to, stood together choose their leader. Even those who didn't want to were not legislators, the powers, those holding the levers of power came and sat in, in the proceedings. As a means of intimidating, they, have, they still chose their leader. That's democracy in evolution. And the beauty of that victory was that after he emerged as speaker, there was no celebration. There was no triumphalism, which is building consolidation. You go back to people and say, hey, gentlemen, this is about this. Now, that is not happening where we are. Where we are. So we're heading towards 2019. It will appear that all the parties are struggling, but like you observed in the earlier segment, the major visible active parties are the PDP and the APC. And we must look at them as platforms to convey good governance. Looking at what's going on now, the debate over primaries or no primaries, the state of the nation, Nigerians are actually watching an evolving democracy, and that is good. You say you can do it. Do it. We're not seeing it happen. We might go elsewhere. It is good. Let's quickly talk about those direct and indirect primaries and what you make of the controversy that has arisen uh, within the ranks of the APC. Mm. Well, the controversy is not surprising. And if you look at it, the logic of it is also perhaps clear. One, if you do indirect for the president, you're not quite sure what would happen. It's a badly divided party. Now, the concern with the one is being proposed indirect for the states. The real fear, as was mentioned in the earlier segment, is that it's likely, you can't say for sure, but it's likely to be a money-driven engagement. If it's indirect, I own the delegates, or I am in the decision-making position as governor, that means a few people will choose who will emerge. There might be considerations for that. So if you ask me, the credibility of the political platform that's marketing this approach is what is being undermined. Mm. We're well, supposed to see a progressive emergence of transparency, free space, open opportunity, 
and you say something about young people. How do you suppose any young person will imagine this in direct primaries? For, for some politicians, it's a season to make money. It's like a Christmas season. Th that's the thing. So the APC is saying that their position is that we want to conduct direct primaries for all elected positions. That's some members of APC. No, no, not some members. That is the stance of the APC as we currently know it today. Mm -hmm. uh, that was what the, the net came out with. Initially, we had been told by Governor Simon Lalong, uh, who briefed the media, that this was... Uh, the thinking. You know, mm -hmm. was the thinking. But then we've been clarified by, or we've been uh, uh, notified by the... Um, acting publicity secretary of the APC that that is not the situation and this is actually the outcome the actual outcome of the out of the of the of the neck meeting <coughs> that is to have direct primaries for all elected positions if you ha want mm. indirect primaries you have to apply specially for it but then you know some people are saying um, how do you think this is going to work considering the fact that the elected positions are many and uh, you know, the governors don't seem to be very happy about it. No, they have reason not to be happy because the calculation is, if I'm governor, I have the opportunity to get away with a lot of things. And now you're going to create a situation where that's not going to work. So you're actually undermining my projections, both about hegemony building and about money making through the coming primaries. That's why they're not. Very quickly, does this transcend political party? Do you think that all political parties should uh, advocate direct primary for the simple fact that it would entrench the internal democratic process and ensure that most members have a say in who, who governs in the country? That's why they're in the party, to choose who governs. So any process that undermines that and makes it less transparent is an assault on democracy. And for an imagined democracy is an attempt actually to bury it. Mm. Well, we have heard the complaint of the PDP, but we can't take that now because it's totally out of time. I mean, they have complained about why the APC would be adopting direct primaries. But I guess another time for that. We have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Dr. Oke Ikechuku is a leadership and governance consultant.